So that was that was a nice thing. The Avis had to adapt to where it was. It wasn't just a ballistic that was going one direction. It was actually conscious of where it was falling, and it kind of decided to change its location. The freaky part, though, which I was like, oh, shit, was Unit 1 catches the angel, and then all of a sudden this half-humanoid projection comes out of the angel's body, out of its core. It, it's not very clear. I, I'd have to watch it again, but because I was just kind of, <gasps> what the fuck is that? And it, did anybody else get the impression that there was some kind of a homage to Jesus' crucifix happening here where the angel projected these dagger thingies through Unit 1's hands. Like, by the way, how the hell did Shinji hold that thing up when he's in pain like that? I know he's been through pain a couple of times, but usually it didn't turn out very well. How the hell did he hold that thing up for so long? Uh, in the series, it was strictly the AT field, and in the series, it was a combination of the AT field and Unit 1's physical strength that held it upright, which, to me, makes sense. But... In this version, it seems more like he was supporting it because his hands had been frickin' run through that that there was some kind of homage to the crucifixion of Jesus. It wasn't really Jesus come to save us, anything like that. It's just, eh, oh, that might be just me. Now, to be fair, compared to the tenth angel that appeared in the series, the eighth angel in 2.0 was much more threatening. But, I don't think it really had the menace that all the other angels up to that point have had. It didn't have the scary, it didn't have the, uh, the, the terror, oh shit, this thing's coming at us, we need to stop it. That, it it, it, it kind of dazzles you like a chandelier of multicolored crystals and things like that, and it's got these big flappy feathery things along the outside, which, eh, I don't know. I mean that that was a that was a cool part. By the way, they recreated the part where uh, Unit One has this momentary standoff with the angel as the angel's soaring right towards it, AT field to full power, and you see this thing coming towards it, and there's all this debris and shit flying around all over, and then he just catches it. That's like one of the coolest moments in the in in the whole show, and they recreated it here, which is cool. They didn't recreate the music though, which was QQ. And yes, we got to see another of Unit 2's new toys, which, eh, double swords, what for? Eh. You know what I, <laughs> you know what I'd like to see in Rebuild if, uh, Unit 1 goes back to any semblance of normal? I'd really like to see the, uh, Magoroko Exterminate Swords make it into Rebuild. If you don't know what these are, the, the Magoroko Exterminate Swords, or Magoroko E-Swords, because that's a lot easier to say, make their debut. I think it happened in the manga, or it happened in the uh, uh, Gainax fanfic um, Girlfriend of Steel. Uh, Unit 1 gets a pair of katana swords, like samurai swords, except that rather than being stored on a belt buckle of some kind, they get stored, you know, a short one and a long one, they get stored on the left utility wing and scabbers that hang upwards along behind the, the, the wing. Uh, I'd like to see those make an appearance, because, believe it or not, it's the only weapon that has ever been provided in toy, and, well, there are no toys of the Avas, but it's the only uh, weapon that's been provided to Unit 1, or even Unit 2 or 0 or 3 on a regular basis, that didn't appear in the show. It's the only weapon that's never appeared in the show or any of the movies, so I'd like to see that happen. So yeah, Eighth Angel... Um, honestly, didn't have the the whole sequence didn't quite have the pizzazz that the the series did, even though you know they had a higher budget to work with. It just, eh. You spend more time, uh, kind of, in awe of all the detail that they put into it. It's it's, it's almost like the angel was over detailed, so it, it kind of drew your attention away from the moment as you're kind of watching all the shit unfurl and stuff. So yeah, eighth angel, yeah. Ninth angel, I've already gone over that. It's kind of... I kind of wish we'd seen how the Ninth Angel attached itself to Unit 3, but I suppose it was cut for time. And by the way, did you see the size of that airplane that was bringing Unit 3 down into that crater? Oh my god, that thing is huge! It's got to be like a mile wide. 
That's one of the things I didn't like about the series is that giant flying wing that carries the Avas around. That thing had to be about a mile and a half wide, and, you know, it took rockets, eight rocket engines under the wings in order to get this thing up in the air, which, yeah, that's cool. How do you move these things through the air? Oh, we attach them to a giant wing. Oh, really? Where's the air base for these things? How long does it take to get the Avas over there? Where do you find a runway long enough to launch these things? In my fanfic, which I started and stopped in 97, actually it was in 98, something like that. I never, I only got four episodes into it. Anyways, uh, I actually came up with the idea for an angel that appears in space that uh, didn't come down. I, I, I hadn't really thought it well out. I just wanted an excuse to get Nava up into space, get it off the ground, and... Uh, I actually came up with this idea that one of the Avas would be planted into a, a a giant rocket, and they you know they'd shoot it up into the air, and it would have to kind of it'd be kind of be like a hidden missile battery where the doors would open up and all these weapons are sitting around the Ava, and you just fire this weapon off, it runs out of ammo, next pulls out another weapon, starts firing. That didn't happen, obviously, but uh, yeah, I, w I would have liked to have seen something like that. Tenth Angel. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. This one had by far the most flash to it. Ironically, it had the least amount of CGI of any of the Angels. That was kind of interesting. Or at least as far as I could tell, it had the least amount of CGI. I'm one of those people who can tell almost instantly when it's CGI and when it's uh, live-action stuff. I just call it a gift, call it a curse. Uh, when Spider-Man is swinging through the skyscrapers of New York City, it's CGI Spider-Man. It's not a real guy. I'm sorry. But uh, anyways, yeah, Tenth Angel. Wow, that was that was one hell of an upgrade. It's it's a uh, I don't even know what the hell to call that thing. It's a mummy. Mm, can't really call it that. Now, of course, it has the that uh, unbreakable, unbeatable quality to it. Uh, but they totally took the, 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 the flapping ninja ribbons to a whole new level. That was that was insane. Not only did it have one pair, but it had like five pairs. Uh, that was kind of annoying that it it actually morphed the two of the, the ribbons into like a pair of pistons, piston-like fists or something like that. Just blocky things and just smack, smack on unit two, and that was it. That was, eh... I kind of like how it actually cut through things with a razor sharp edge. This angel, though, wow! It, it got it, the tenth angel got a huge got the got the really big upgrade, uh, just like the sixth angel did. Uh, they they just took it to that that whole new level that the uh, series couldn't do, and that was a that was pretty amazing. I mean, I, I saw, like, the, the multiple AT field things. Like, it's got, like, 32 layers of AT field, and it was actually using its AT field to push Unit 2 around. That was pretty crazy. And how Unit 0 had to, had to like, literally claw its way through uh, each individual field before it could get to the main one. That was one thing, though, that uh, my jaw hit the floor, and I said, that's cheating, that's not fair was they push through the AT field, the N2 mine goes off, and it closes up this little shell or something like that around its core, and then, you know, it survived. Like, hey, you pushed all the way through the AT field, you should be hitting flesh about this point. How the hell can it survive that? I mean, the whole point of AT fields is they protect it from damage. When you get physical, when you actually punch through the AT field, well, then it's up to the natural defenses and... And, I'm sorry, N2 Mines just... It should have blown that angel away, so that, the, that, that's one of the few things I thought about angels, is that it was cheating. It closes up that little flap of skin, whatever, and it's it's just fine. Oh yeah, and then at 8, unit 0. What? So we had a, we had a good variety of uh, freakish monsters, which many people tried to imitate uh, shortly after the success of Ava. If you remember an anime that came out shortly after uh, Evangelion, uh, I think it was Razifon, uh, however you say it. I didn't watch it, but the the lead robo in that, actually I think it was the only robo, was very Ava looking. And some of the monsters were abstract painting type monsters that they'd had in Ava.
Princesses of Aquarian, which I saw the first, what was it, three episodes of that, and I just haven't gone back to it at all. Cool fight sequences, kind of realistic, uh, but again, angels for the monsters. Very abstract-looking critters. So we had a, there have been many imitators, uh, and I suppose that the CGI is spoiling the artists at, uh, at Kara. Uh, it is okay to have an angel that doesn't do very much. Uh, I couldn't really say that of the new third angel. The fifth angel in 1.0, though, was... Kind of goes against my idea that uh, each angel is progressively more difficult than the previous one. All that you see is those little laser whips, and that's it. Ooh, big scary thing. Honestly, I never had much respect for uh, the old fourth angel, the new fifth angel. In 1.0, the only time we had any light moments, moment, I suppose, is when uh, we go to Misato's apartment for the first time and we get to meet Pen Pen. And that was literally, that. that's really the only light-hearted or you know, you know, non-stressful moment in the whole movie. I don't really think Shinji looking at that picture of Misato at the telephone booth, I don't think that counts. I don't count it as a light moment. It's like, hey, Shinji, look here. You know what, Misato? Why don't you just strip down to a bikini and call it good, you know? Or better yet, strip all the way down. You know, if you're going to tease him, do it the right way. But in 2.0, they, they totally stepped it up. There was the aquarium thing, which, again, it wasn't necessary to the storyline. Uh, they, they they showed us that the world is, is starting to recover, but they didn't really do much more than that. And it also gave them an excuse to uh, uh, have Shinji uh, interrupt Ray's poetry for a moment there while she's looking up against one of the aquarium tanks so that Asuka could be jealous. There was a lot of that, though. I was surprised. Uh, Asuka being very, very jealous of Shinji and Rei, even though there's obviously nothing happened. If she's so smart and intuitive, she would have seen that. And by the way, why the hell would she be interested in men anyway? So she calls him, uh, what was it, Baka Shinji. How, however, the, however they say in Japan. You know, she's, he's an idiot. Why the hell would you be attracted to an idiot? I can't st Personally, I can't stand idiots. <laughs> My replies to the idiot comments on uh, Collection DX's YouTube channel... Uh, we'll say it all. I've had, th I've had, getting off topic real quick, I've, I had three years of patience, and then I lost patience, and so now I get pissed off real easily. That That's a real hot button for me when it comes to YouTube and responding to idiots. Ugh, I can't stand it. I'm just gonna bite their heads off. I don't care. A bit like Asuka did in 2.0 when she met Shinji. Does that make me a bitch? Uh... And then there was uh, the whole Asuka meeting Pen Pen, which, okay, that didn't... I, I'm surprised they did that twice. Uh, and then there's the whole Asuka being naked and censored very thoroughly, and yet we see Ray's nipple a couple of times uh, later on, which, eh. Oh, that's something I forgot to mention a moment ago. Uh, the 10th Angel eats Unit Zero, lol, and then it grows half a human female body. I'm so. Why is it that that angel didn't have nipples on it? I'm just. I'm just curious. You know, it had everything else except for a head. It was kind of a Medusa-shaped thing. It was like a uh, African witch doctor shaman thingy mixed with Medusa, one of the Gorgons. It was kind of like that. Which I'm not sure if they're trying to imitate the giant ray from uh, the end of Evangelion when they did that. But it was very... It was kind of strange. I kind of wish it just stayed the way it was with the, the ribbon arms and things like that. Very threatening, the Tenth Angel. Very, very creepy looking thing. Although, I can't remember if it was Misato or Ritsuko pointed out kind of a creepy thing that now that the Angel had ingested an Ava, it would be able to sneak past the sensors in the terminal dogma so they'd be able to get to Lilith undetected or, or rather unhindered. That's uh, that's kind of a creepy thing. That that was something that the, the designers of Tokyo 3 hadn't planned. You know, they, they can plan an Ava traveling at supersonic speeds having to make a hard right turn so they can go from 107 to 115 
but they can't anticipate that an angel would be able to imitate the physical form of an avon or to be able to sneak through the terminal dogma. Huh. 